So let's go ahead and get right into it. Will I be playing and posting Modern Warfare to the channel this year? Well, the answer is yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. And today, Bravo 6 has gone in dark. Today, Infinity Ward has stepped the F up. Today, Modern Warfare 2019 Activision Super Special Edition looks like the best Call of Duty in what feels like forever ever ever. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my Call of Duty Modern Warfare review. I think Call of Duty Modern Warfare is a top 5 Call of Duty of all time. Goodness, is that really Captain Price? It's a title that everyone has heard, and you don't even have to have played video games before to know about it. Whether kids would talk about it at your lunchroom table in elementary school, or you've seen an advertisement about it online, Call of Duty is unquestionably perhaps one of the most recognizable gaming franchises of all time. Call of Duty absolutely revolutionized the way that first-person shooter games were developed. Not just the technical layouts of the game, but also how the online multiplayer received such a large emphasis compared to the offline modes. Now of course we have to give credit to the original Star Wars Battlefront game and games of that nature for really popularizing an online multiplayer. But Call of Duty was the very first game which had the most mass appeal that really made the whole multiplayer craze what it is today. Developers of Battlefield, Star Wars Battlefront 2, Fortnite, Overwatch, no matter what game it is, sink two or three times even more energy into building a multiplayer mode than their offline features. Some of those games I just mentioned don't even have offline modes. The very first ever Call of Duty game came out in 2003 when I was five years old. So probably, like a lot of you watching this video, this franchise has been around almost your entire life, maybe even longer. Now this video is not going to be a history lesson on Call of Duty, but what it is meant to analyze is how the series originally got sidetracked between the disastrous release of Call of Duty Ghosts in 2013, and how the franchise lost almost its entire core player base in the years following. Here we are almost six years later, and yeah, there have been some good games since then, most people enjoyed Black Ops 3 and 4 to some extent, and the World War II game was a nice change-up. But it's an undisputed fact that Advanced Warfare, Infinite Warfare, and Ghost to some extent will just go down in history as those really, really bad ones, and we'll try to just forget about them along with Fallout 76 and Anthem. If you're like me, then it wasn't until this year and the release of Modern Warfare that you were actually excited and ready to throw money at a Call of Duty game. And like a lot of you, I personally did just that. With the release of Warzone, which is a cross-platform battle royale free-to-play spin-off of what the core game is already about, the franchise arguably hasn't been so popular since the release of Modern Warfare 2, which was now over 10 years ago. But really, what happened? What changed? Why did the player base come back? And what can Activision do to continue building on this success? So to answer these questions, and without further ado, let's get right into the video. So after the Modern Warfare and Black Ops series were absolutely crushing sales records and are still to this day some of the most beloved video games of all time, someone at Activision or Infinity Ward decided that it would be a good idea to set Call of Duty a couple years ahead in the future. The community went, meh, 
and after a few months went back and played all the older, more popular games. But to be fair, not everybody did. So then one afternoon, Activision executives sat around the boardroom table and went, okay guys, listen, our last game was okay, but we need something bigger, something different, something to really knock the socks off of our player base. Then one man at the back of the room raised his hand and went, Call of Duty with jetpacks? Brilliant! So the trailer for the game came out and the community went, what the fuck? What have you done with our beloved Call of Duty franchise? We'll give it a shot, I guess. But most players hated the idea of Hellfire being rained down upon them by people flying across the map, and it brought an entirely new element to the franchise, which has now been known as Vertical Combat. This made this game absolutely unplayable for some, and I won't even get into the controversy surrounding supply drops. But let's be real, most people hated it and just went back to the old games faster than they even did with Ghosts. At this point, after two devastating and failed releases, it was at this point people started getting bored of playing Modern Warfare 2, Modern Warfare 3, Black Ops 2, etc. And some of the player base even started moving to Destiny, Forza Horizons, Battlefield 4, and then you have to remember also Grand Theft Auto 5 was released around that time. There was a shifting landscape around that time in the gaming community, and Activision, rightfully so, had to do something big to pull players back to their game. So they went back to that exact same table, and Treyarch announced they'd be making Black Ops 3, which also focused around vertical combat, but they toned it down just a smidge. Players moved slower, favorite weapons came back, sniping was better, trickshotting was actually possible, and Activision sighed a breath of relief that people were playing their game again. It sold 250 million units and was the best-selling game of 2015. Thank goodness the crisis was avoided. So after the release of Black Ops 3, the next game in the series was going to be developed by Infinity Ward, which was the beloved studio that we knew so well for producing the Modern Warfare original trilogy. Quick everyone, we need another game that people will love. We need to make sure that we listen to the community and take their feedback into account. Let's see, Ghosts was okay, Advanced Warfare was awful, Black Ops 3 is selling well, let's try and build off that to produce a game which fans really want. Any ideas? Then the Infinity Ward executive looked up and went, Call of Duty in space? Perfect. Hey everyone, check out the new trailer for our game and... No! The whole purpose of that was to show that despite fans taking to the internet to offer feedback and ideas for new games, Activision sort of has a reputation for not listening very well. After being the laughing stock of the community for one of the biggest humiliations in video game history, Infinity Ward basically just went, fuck it, let's go back to what we know. The reaction from the community was absolutely incredible, and Call of Duty Modern Warfare, as of December 2019, has earned over $1 billion. Talk about success. It had a new campaign, reworked multiplayer, crossplay support, battle royale as free to play with Warzone, it was optimized for PC and ultrawide monitors and uncapped frame rates and 4K support. That almost covered everything that fans wanted, and it was a huge middle finger to Fortnite and Apex Legends or whatever other games have the spotlight at that time. For once, Call of Duty had given fans what they wanted, and the sales just absolutely started rolling in. As I mentioned before, the term over $1 billion is a lot of money, and 600 million of that came within the very first three days after release. So we can infer from those figures that over 1 billion is probably a lot more at this point in time. The game is also free of microtransactions that would influence someone's ability to gain an advantage over another player. Now, cosmetic stuff and season passes and whatever, go ahead and spend your money if you want. That doesn't bother me. I'm just concerned about what I'm getting for my $80. And I personally feel that when I purchased this $80 Modern Warfare game, I got $80 worth of my money, which cannot be said for some other AAA games released recently. This game is incredibly nostalgic, but it wouldn't be successful if nostalgia was the only thing that it had going for it. People aren't going to buy an awful game just because it mentions Captain Price. There's a lot more to it. You need to remember that people who were 10 to 15 years old when Modern Warfare 2 came out, which was arguably the peak of Call of Duty's popularity, are now 21 and 26 years old and are picking up playing again for the first time in years. And the primary reason for this is because Modern Warfare is something that they know, something that they're familiar with, and it brings back good memories from their childhood. Activision actually just announced that the MW2 campaign remastered is now available for players via an update. This wasn't even something that was promised when the game came out. 
It just seems like there's so much content that you'll never run out of things to do. Modern Warfare is a game that you should buy just for the single player alone. The map design is incredible and rivals that of the MW2 and COD4 campaigns that came before it. With reviewers saying that the game is great and the absolute behemoth of a marketing machine that Activision has thrown behind this game, tons of people are hopping back on their consoles to play their beloved Call of Duty Modern Warfare series. Building off of Black Ops 4, Modern Warfare obviously does not have any vertical combat that the players hated in years prior. Now obviously you can still climb up in buildings and jump out of helicopters in Warzone, but it brings Call of Duty back to a simpler time when all you had to worry about was people coming around corners, not flying over buildings to fire on you. It appears now that Activision and the developers of COD have smartened up in relation to their future releases. Someone asked David Vonderhaar if the rumored Black Ops 5, which is set to release next year, had advanced movements or jetpacks in it, and his response was no. A lot of players missed the campaign mode last year with Black Ops 4. When playing the campaigns of Modern Warfare, it really does feel like a step in the right direction when comparing it to the older games like MW2 and MW3. You might even notice some familiar faces from your childhood while playing it, and it's little things like this that really make the campaign stand out. Playing a Call of Duty campaign is really just like being in your own large-scale action movie, and there's always something interesting to do when you get bored of the multiplayer. Now this campaign only lasts a few hours, and this one features high-resolution cutscenes and remarkably fast gameplay. Admittedly, the Modern Warfare campaign does move really fast, but it has a ton of moments that you're sure to remember. On the flip side to fast gameplay, there's a ton of stealth missions that you have to move slowly, check corners, and act like you're watching and acting in Zero Dark Thirty. This is an area where the campaign excels and it's incredibly fun to play. There's a ton of fan service to the diehard fans, so much so that if you haven't played the campaign yet, do so and you'll probably have a few freakout moments like I did. If you're playing on PC and your computer can handle 4K with high settings, you will be treated to one of the most visually pleasing Call of Duty experiences ever. Now I'm not going to go super in depth on what happens in the campaign and who lives and dies, but there are hundreds of videos out there that already do that. But whether you think that the Modern Warfare campaign was a soft reboot or perhaps a ripoff of older games, there's no denying that it feels like a Call of Duty game. And after all that we've been subjected to for the last couple of years, that was an incredible thing to see. This is probably the area that they got the most right, and fans have been asking for this level of customization for as long as I can remember. You can apply what seems like endless attachments to your weapon with the new PIC-10 system, and there are tons of different camos that you can use right down to different reticle sites. Now these have been in games before, but it's never felt like this before. But it's never quite felt like this. It would be almost impossible to run into another player using the exact same loadout as you, which is a refreshing thing to add to any video game. The game balances this however quite well, for example the foregrip offers increased recoil control, but that makes your player move slower. There's no super distinct advantages and everything is very well balanced. I always wanted to, while playing earlier Call of Duty games, make these types of changes to my weapons and develop something that was truly and uniquely my own. With Modern Warfare, the developers have made that wish now a reality. Sometimes when trying to revive a video game franchise, it isn't just about what the game does, but it's about what it doesn't do. Modern Warfare never had pay to win, it did not have cross-platform, it doesn't charge you for DLC, it doesn't do any of the sellout tom fuckery that games like Fallout 76 and Battlefront and others have done, it wasn't released in a broken state which will be slowly patched in the future, it's transparent, you get what you pay for, and you pay for what you get. It didn't have jetpacks. It didn't take place in the year 26,000, it didn't have rocket ships, it was just good old classic Call of Duty. So to sum up what we learned, it appears that the executives at Activision looked at the like-dislike ratio and decided it would be a good idea to make a game set in the current time period. It's such a simple antidote, yet took years of research and development and probably hundreds of thousands of dollars in executive salaries until they finally figured it out. And I mean, sure, it probably isn't easy running a billion dollar video game franchise and pumping out a new game every single year. And I'm sure that there were people who liked Advanced and Infinite Warfare and still play them every single evening to this day. Now, I hope I never meet one of those people, but I'm sure that they do exist. In summary, the reason Call of Duty was saved is because it returned to its roots. No, not World War II in Call of Duty 1. 
It returned back to the modern warfare era, which was the golden age of gaming. Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, coming home after school, playing with your friends, that's what everybody remembers. But the roots of Call of Duty are people like you and me, people between the ages of probably 17 and 30 who grew up playing this stuff. This game bridged the gap between the really, really little kids and the older veteran players who were playing Modern Warfare 2 10 years ago. It's not perfect, but it is a game for everyone, and hopefully Activision can continue to produce games like this for years to come. It's a winning formula, and surely people will get bored of it eventually, but that has not happened yet. If you made it to the end of this video, thank you very much for watching. Please let me know what you think of Modern Warfare in the comments down below, and if you started playing it again. But that just about does it for me, and if you want to watch any more of my other videos, click subscribe. I'll definitely be posting more often now that I'm done university, and we're all stuck in our houses due to a global pandemic. Once again, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.